speaking and do the same with your videos. And uh, please write your questions, comments and observation in the chat room. And respecting those, those rules will uh, give us uh, better conditions of hearing and then better interaction. Thank you very much. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, dear partners, depending on where you are. And welcome to this webinar entitled Gender Responsive Education Toolkit for Teachers, Teacher Educators, School Managers and Curriculum Developers in Africa. In partnership with UNESCO IGBA, UNESCO SNA project, UNESCO IGBA has developed a publication entitled Gender Responsive Education Toolkit for Teachers, Teacher Education, School Managers and Curriculum Developers in Africa, which is the title of the webinar also, to support efforts by education institutions in the continent. This webinar introduces the toolkit to you participants with presentations on content and main functions of the toolkit, including discussions on how end users are supposed to utilize the toolkit for intended education purposes. My name is Sally Sal, and I am the Senior Program Coordinator of UNESCO IGBA and I will be moderating this session with the following agenda. Uh, right after me, I'll be giving the floor to uh, Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, who is the uh, Director of UNESCO IGBA for a welcoming speech. Just after her, the floor will be given to Mr. Solomon Andreji, Project Officer at UNESCO IGBA, who will be introducing the toolkit. And after that, after uh, Solomon, we'll give the floor to Dr. Temeskian Malaku, a teacher educator at Bahadar University. And uh, right after those two speeches and presentation, we'll have their uh, the questions and answers session, which will be moderated by uh, Dr. Temechan Engida, Program Officer at UNESCO IGBA. And after that, we'll have some closing remarks. So thank you all for joining. And without further ado, I'm going to give the floor to Dr. Yumiko Yoko, the key director of UNESCO IGBA. Yumiko, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Salyu. And um, I can I think we can still say happy International Women's Day. Um, thank you very much, colleagues, for joining us in this webinar which focuses on girls' education. And uh, this is the 25th anniversary of the Beijing Declaration in 1995. So this is a very memorable year. After 25 years of successive um, policy and programmatic efforts, globally, female enrollment accounted for 55% of the total an increase in primary and secondary enrollment. However, we are still lagging behind in the African continent, especially in the sub-Saharan African countries. So in order to bring more girls into school and also to, for these uh, young girls to achieve. Now in SDG, we are looking at uh, not only the enrollment, but also learning that the girl, if girls learn and achieve to make their lives with a lot of opportunities. That's where we are. But now uh, what is needed is a pedagogy. So what we have um, come up with on uh, this gender responsive pedagogy is uh, something um, we, thanks to HNA project, we came up with this in uh, Ghana and Ethiopia. And we took a lot of questions and comments from uh, other countries and, and then um, other partners. So we feel that this is something we can make use of in other countries as well. This is one of the resources. Teachers need a lot of resources to become gender responsive in their teaching and also classroom to have a gender responsive learning environment. So this, the main objective of today's webinar is to introduce to you this um, 
the main functions and the utility of this toolkit to discuss how we can maximize the impact of teaching and learning and teacher uh, training activities in Africa for it to be gender responsive. I trust you will find the webinar interesting and hope that you will also share your invaluable ideas and the comments. Thank you very much again for your participation and happy International Women's Day and 25th anniversary of uh, Beijing Declaration. Thank you very much. Over to you. Um, Thank you. Salut. Yeah, thank you very much, Jimiko, for, for this opening opening remark with, with a lot of information and also an appeal to uh, make other countries benefit from what has been achieved already in Ghana and, uh, and Ethiopia, thanks to the collaboration between HNA and IGBA. So thank you again. Now I'm going to take to give the floor to Mr. Salomon Andeji, project officer at the UNESCO IGBA, who will be introducing the toolkit. So Salomon, over to you. Thank you and uh, welcome all to this webinar. My name is Solomon Andarge. I'm a project officer and UNESCO ECPA. As already has been said by Dr. Yumiko and uh, Mr. Salu, uh, ECPA has recently published a gender responsive education toolkit to be used by teachers and education professionals uh, involved in education activities in Africa. Taking this as a background, uh, this webinar has two specific objectives, mainly. First, uh, by way of uh, launching this toolkit, uh, the webinar introduces the content and uh, usability issues to your participants, and then Second, uh, using this event as an opportunity, as an event also uh, facilitates uh, discussion on recent developments and challenges in girls and women education in Africa. Uh, Agenda 2063 of the African Union aspires uh, an Africa where development is people driven by unleashing the potential of uh, women and uh, youth. In the heart of this aspiration lies gender equality in all spheres of uh, development. Uh, this is because uh, gender equality outcomes will aid Africa to live forward in the path for development. In recent studies, uh, it was reported that by narrowing the gender gap, Sub-Saharan Africa has the opportunity to add up to 12% to annual GDP by 2025. It is argued that vis-a-vis -vis this uh, the vision for development, girls education is one of the most cost-effective strategies to promote development and economic growth. The explanation for this is straightforward because uh, educated mothers uh, will have uh, healthy and well-nourished children and that and their children uh, will be most probably uh, educated just breaking the cycle of uh, poverty. However, uh, there are still concerning issues in the education of uh, Africa with regard to uh, gender equality. In recent uh, education reports, um, there are about 9 million out of school girls um, globally. About 4 million of these school out of school girls live in sub Saharan Africa. This is still an unchallenged um, problem. Even for those who are in a school, there are concerns regarding the quality and relevance of education for them. Particularly, uh, performances and in education, in secondary education and participation in STEM subjects at secondary and tertiary levels are more skewed toward these males. These are mainly the challenging issues in education of uh, Africa. 
With regard to the gender parity, there are improvements in general, especially uh, since the launching of the Millennium Development Goal and uh, the IFA initiatives years back. However, still today, uh, for some countries in West Africa, the gender gap at primary school is almost 50%. Only few countries have managed to attain 30% uh, of girls' net enrollment in secondary school in Africa. Even in tertiary education institutions in Africa, there are uh, today more men than women. This uh, report has been taken from the recent uh, UIS publication. I don't know whether this is visible for you. As you can see from uh, the curves in for secondary and tertiary education, Africa is still lagging behind in terms of closing the gender gap in education with regard to the gender parity. These are still unchallenged problems in the education of Africa. The reason for this challenge is can be traced back to the gender biases and stereotypes. There are many challenges affecting the girls and women education. Often these challenges can be structured into levels like the family level challenges, the school level challenges and the society level challenges. Often these challenges interact with one another to even uh, have a greater impact on the education of the girls and women education. At family level, poverty is one reason. There are also gender biases and stereotypes, which even affect the child from the early stage in order to succeed in their uh, education forward. School level uh, challenges include lack of gender sensitive and gender responsive curricula and teaching and learning practices. These are still uh, unmitigated. At society level, we have also challenges, including past policies, norms, and practices. Given this uh, outstanding challenges, we still have a long way to go in terms of narrowing down the gender gap in education. Particularly at the school level, improving the knowledge and skills of gender mainstreaming is very important. This is one key area of intervention in, in this regard for bridging the gender gap in education. Eventually, the Gender Responsive Education Toolkit, ICBA developed aims to support the institutional capacity for gender mainstreaming in education, especially through improving the knowledge and the skills of teachers, teacher educators, school managers, and curriculum developers in Africa. Therefore, this toolkit we developed is organized in modules and units, each of them covering an area of content to address needs of specific group of beneficiaries. The toolkit also has 13 thematic design tools and a number of workout examples. Therefore, based on the uh, purpose of the toolkit, it has two main functions. In one hand, in one hand it will be used as uh, a hands-on tool for those professionals to be used in day-to-day -day practices. And second, it will be used as a training manual to build institutional capacities with regard to gender mainstreaming in education. Based on the logical relationship between the content, the toolkit is organized in six modules. Each of the module 
will focus on proposed beneficiaries. However, uh, there is no any um, strict demarcation uh, which module uh, belongs to which group of beneficiaries. So uh, rather, it will focus on uh, a very comprehensive and holistic issues in education. So it's open for any one of the education professional involving in teaching learning and curriculum development processes. We have also tools, uh, proposed tools, about 13 designed tools under each of the modules. So proposed beneficiaries for each of these tools are also uh, education professionals and and they will find them this a very important tools in performing a specific task of activity in education. So uh, there is now a strict demarcation which education professional uses uh, which tool, but rather they focus on uh, very holistic issues. So a curriculum developer may use uh, any one of these uh, tools. So uh, these are very holistic and, uh, uh, and then they follow the comprehensive approach from uh, micro level uh, school based activities to teacher training in education and institutions. So as a conclusion, uh, this attempt is not a one step source for professional answers on gender issues. Rather, it is a one step forward to the solution of the problem. So uh, our success depends on contribution and commitment of uh, each one of us. Thank you, uh, and with this, uh, well, uh, we look forward to get your comment during the uh, discussion time. So back to you, Salu. Hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Mrs. Solomon, for the presentation of the, of the toolkit, which is really informative. You have talked about gender gaps that can be found at various education levels and in different regions in Africa and also the related challenges that need to be to be addressed and how best we can address those those challenges to bring solutions to fill to fill the gap. Uh, you said it, we have a long way to go, but thanks to initiatives like this, I think that we, we, we must keep optimistic. So thank you very much. So now I'm going to give the floor to uh, Dr. Temesgen Melaku teacher educator at Baylor University for the panel discussion. Thank you very much uh, <clears throat> for your invitation. I would like to thank the ICBA theme and Dr. Emiko for giving me a chance uh, to reflect my points in this webinar. Um, as you can see from the slide, uh, my points of uh, presentation will be on four important issues. Uh, first, I would like to see what are the bases for developing this toolkit? What approach or what principle has been <coughs> attended, uh, taken from the position of UN uh, institutions? And what are the progresses observed in relation to gender? And what challenges are there? And how does these uh, challenges are addressed by the toolkit uh, and what are the specific things included in the toolkit and finally my reflection on the link between the module contents and uh, perspectives and the background uh, which will be presented <clears throat> in the first part of the presentation. So uh, Heno, can you take me to the next slide? Okay. So perspectives and rationale for gender responsive education. I want to see if the toolkit is basing itself on some of the principles you is following. And I wanted to see if the toolkit is uh, has some basis on uh, UN educational initiatives. Uh, I'm sure all of you know these things. Uh, if I'm repeating what you, you already know, I ask um, apologies for that. Um, my observation is that um, UN is guided by <clears throat> the human rights based approach, which is one of the principles that all the development initiatives are 
guided. And this initiative, this, this uh, approach mainly considers um, the analysis of inequalities and redressing discriminatory practice and unjust uh, distribution of power, which has you know, direct link with the issue of gender, I think. So basing the toolkit with this principle is something that it has to be considered. Uh, gender as one of the development issues is also addressed by uh, different UN educational initiatives. If we start from uh, what has been <clears throat> conducted in the first uh, attempt, that is the education for all framework, uh, gender equality was taken as an important issue to achieve uh, during that time and later in the uh, United Nations or oh, the same time I think the parallel time the United Nations Girls Education Initiative also given high attention to the issue of gender uh, it recognized that all children girls and boys have the right to learn in safe and <clears throat> um, conducive learning environment, which is an issue in improving the quality of education, especially for girls. The issue of safe and supportive learning environment is very important. So uh, this initiative is also an important indicator for um, the concern uh, that the toolkit has addressed. And later in 2015, uh, which is a base for the uh, sustainable development goal de uh, sustainable development goals uh, has also uh, considered the issue of gender and it has uh, given much attention and included its uh, goals like goal 4.1 and 4.5 uh, given attention for the gender issues um, so I, I can say that um, the, the the rights based approach uh, is an important approach uh, that to address the gender-related problems and the toolkit uh, seems to give attention for this, this, uh, this uh, approach. So there is um, a principle that backs up the development of the toolkit that I have understood from uh, my uh, <clears throat> attempt to review the principles used. Uh, in addition to this backup, of the principles and approaches. Researches also show that dealing with gender is an important uh, thing because it has a, a great role in improving the life of girls themselves as well as the community and the society at large. So um, the effort of the toolkit with dealing with the gender issue is also uh, supported by research uh, findings as well. Uh, to be more specific, I, I, I go through the SDG, SDG goal 4 with a target 4.1 and 4.5. These uh, targets are focusing on access to quality and equitable education. It deals with the issue of completion. Uh, it deals with the importance of ensuring learning outcomes. Especially 4.5 tries to eliminate I mean, <clears throat> uh, disparities in all these. So the uh, goal 4.4.5, I mean, the target for 4.1, 4.5 um, are, you know, important targets to be achieved over the coming uh, nine years or for uh, 2030. So still, uh, the, the toolkit is consistent with the development targets set by uh, the education initiatives of UN, there is consistency in the toolkit and the, the targets we have in 2030 education goals. Uh, the next slide. Um, although these efforts are made, uh, I mean, following these efforts, a number of uh, improvements have been observed. If you look at what uh, Mr. Solomon has presented, the disparities in many aspects has improved uh, and many African countries and other members of the UN have made significant improvements in dealing with, dealing with gender issues. But yet the data and some studies show that uh, even if 
uh, emphasis is given so much by different nations in the UN. And even if uh, promising progress are observed, there are still concerns uh, with respect to uh, gaps in gender. And the report is also show that COVID-19 pandemic has uh, um, increased the gap. Uh, so <clears throat> there, there are also other, uh, I mean, data and factors which show that there are still gaps, disparities in terms of enrollment, in terms of dropout, uh, in terms of uh, you know, learning outcome. Uh, which shows that the, the problem still persists, uh, although efforts are being made. Uh, next slide, please. Yanuk. Next slide. Okay. Some some of the factors uh, may be indicated by this uh, diagram. Um, if you look at uh, the data. Uh, and the different colors, the, the red and the, or, the orange colors, these, these colors show that the girls' disparity is observed at the disadvantage, I mean, disparity is observed as a disadvantage of girls, uh, and most uh, African, Middle East, and Southeast uh, countries, um, the, 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 the parity is uh, in favor of me. Girls are still behind. Uh, the boys. Next slide. And if we look at the out, out of school girls as well, um, in, in Ethiopia and uh, most African countries, uh, there is a serious problem that girls are uh, out of school compared to more girls are out of school compared to boys. So the number of girls who are out of school are still higher compared to that of the boys. Next slide. Uh, when it comes to completion rate, the same the same is true. This is specific to Ethiopia, and the diagram shows that although the, there is a narrow, to, I mean there is a trend to be narrow as um, years increase, still uh, the males are still higher in terms of completion compared to the females. Still, the completion rate is still. Uh, manifesting gender disparity. Next slide. Yeah, um, wh what are then the factors contributing for such disparity? And the recent report of the World Bank shows that there are a number of factors attributed to this. Poverty is one, violence, especially school-related gender-based violence is the other, child marriage, lack of school, inadequate infrastructure, unsafe environment, limitations in the teacher's training and teaching and learning materials, um, and um, COVID and its consequences like pregnancy, violence, as well as health problems are uh, reported as contributing factors for especially uh, disparities in completion and uh, uh, um, dropout for for girls. So these diagrams also show that these are the factors we have in terms of uh, some of the environmental factors affecting the participation of girls. The infrastructure, the classroom size, the accessibility of some kind of service like water and sanitary facilities uh, indicate that still there are a lot of problems uh, which makes schools not that much suitable for girls compared to boys. Well, I think the figures are very small to see, but the facts show that, for example, uh, in this part, in the first African uh, map, uh, we can see that <clears throat> uh, nearly 15% of schools in Ethiopia do not have toilets. And the second African map shows that the potable water access 40 to 49 percent of uh, schools in Ethiopia do not have potable water and these uh, services these kind of facilities are serious problems that can contribute for possible disparities between boys and girls so uh, I think when when we look at from the approach and the 
factors uh, reported so far, the toolkit seems to address all these kinds of uh, issues in, in its contents. So I think there are adequate uh, theoretical and empirical evidence to justify the development of the toolkit. Next slide, please. So now let's look at uh, what the toolkit uh, deals with. Well, I, I'll not uh, take much time to, to deal on this one. Um, it has four purposes, which is already indicated <clears throat> in, the, in the toolkit. The first purpose is to guide uh, the day-to-day -day practice of uh, the relevant target groups for, for the toolkit. And the other one is it provides best practice and promising approaches, new approaches, different approaches and practices. Uh, that also is an important part. Uh, it also can serve as a resource to the target groups for, for the toolkit. It can, it can be used as a train manual, it can be used as a guide to refer for or in response to everyday practices. Uh, this, in general, will contribute to the development of uh, institutional capacity. The institutional capacity may be in terms of improving the programs of the teacher education institutions, the programs of primary and uh, secondary education uh, curriculum, contents, and whatever. The, the capacity could be in terms of improving the practice of teachers, uh, the practice of people engaged in preparing curriculum materials. So developing the capacity of different actors um, is another purpose. <clears throat> and next slide. Now, when we look at the content, is, as it has been mentioned by uh, Mr. Salomon, the toolkit is organized in six modules. And the first one, uh, provides the basic concepts of uh, gender. There are concepts like gender, sex, sex role, gender role, gender relation, and other more uh, important concepts. So it starts by exposing um, target groups with different perspectives and concepts to understand the discussions, actions, and issues in in, in, in gender uh, in general. So important content, important terms are included. Uh, it, it is included as a glossary as well as there are uh, focused points included in module one. Another important thing in module one is the, <clears throat> the SARAS uh, model framework. Uh, this is a framework that can help to analyze and address gender gaps which is consistent with the rights-based approach as well. Uh, I think this framework fits to the approach I have discussed earlier. And it's not only this one, although this framework is introduced and elaborated much, there are also other frameworks presented in the material that really is helpful for uh, researchers and teachers to use this framework to analyze and address gender-related issues. So I think module one provides basic issues to understand all the other parts of the module. Module two is dealing with uh, the nature of adolescence and sexual maturity. Yeah, this is, I think, the part where teachers, uh, educational leaders, curriculum developers should take into account uh, to, to give attention for what kind of needs do boys and girls have. Uh, in my uh, understanding, this is a chapter where we have to give attention to find out the needs of boys and girls. So uh, following the uh, development, the biological development, uh, there are a number of needs uh, that appear during this time that needs significant attention from the uh, <clears throat> this is the target groups. So this is a very important chapter, uh, which can help teachers to understand what is going on during this age, what kind of support they can provide for students. And this is also an important module that provides adequate information for the guidance counselors, school leaders, and curriculum developers to consider uh, their practices very well and address the needs of uh, boys and girls. 
the other one is um, uh, module three. This deals with gender responsive teacher education and uh, school uh, management. Um, well, this is a module that deals mainly with policy issues and how the different policies in the sector in uh, teacher education, uh, as well as school institution level policies should address uh, the gender issues. It, it, it helps to it provides gender lanes uh, to find out what are really the gaps in the policies and how they can be solved. And um, what are the different ways of uh, solving the gender gaps uh, are also indicated in this, in this part. So the next slide. Module four is um, about the environment, which I have already reported earlier for uh, quality education to happen and for to retain girls in schools and help them complete, achieve high learning outcomes. The schools must be uh, safe and conducive to them. And um, in dealing with uh, safe learning environment, there are a number of uh, issues included. The physical environment, the social environment are treated very well. Enabling environments are uh, indicated uh, that gives a good idea for teachers, teacher educators, and school leaders. And this module also includes the school related gender based violence um, and how uh, teachers and guidance and counselors can respond to possible uh, violences in, uh, in, in school, how they can prevent and how, can they, how they can uh, <clears throat> protect uh, such problems. So that's another important uh, module. Um, module five is uh, gender responsive pedagogy. It mainly deals with what is going on in the classroom and what the curriculum has to, has to contain. So teacher education curriculum is one of the, the, the parts in the module and it shows um, how the curriculum should be developed to make it responsive to gender uh, concerns. So there are tools to check whether the curriculum is gender fair, whether there are no stereotypes, um, whether um, it gives equal attention for boys and girls as well. So the necessary uh, cares should be, I mean, the, the, the necessary cares that should be taken in preparing the curriculum and the tools to check whether the curriculum is really gender responsive uh, are provided for uh, the curriculum people as well as for even teachers to, to observe their textbooks and improve accordingly. Teaching and learning materials, the kind of materials teachers use in the classroom uh, should also be um, gender responsive. It should not um, <clears throat> Uh, contribute for the already existing stereotype, it rather should uh, ensure gender equality. And there are important ideas included there for teachers to consider in the process of uh, choosing and preparing their teaching materials. Lesson planning is another issue. Uh, so what are the gender balances to be well, I mean, what, what are the gender issues to be considered in preparing the lessons? is also addressed um, in this part of the module. It starts from setting the learning outcomes. It uh, includes uh, uh, what should be taken into account in preparing activities, managing the classroom, and uh, you know uh, every necessary part uh, in the lesson plan, assessment, uh, teaching materials, and the like. The decision in the plan in all these things should take into account that gender is um, fairly treated. The classroom setup um, and interaction is another area. <clears throat> the way we, we, we arrange classes, the seating arrangement in the classroom, in the labs, uh, should provide you know, uh, equal opportunity for boys and girls, and the setup has to give chance for that. 
the interaction among students and the interaction between the teacher and the students should give equal chance for both boys and girls, and that has to be considered. And it, I mean, the, the yeah. module thinks, yeah. Yeah, could you please summarize in the next five minutes, please? Okay, thank you. So language use in the classroom is also another uh, important part in the module. And the last one is uh, about uh, monitoring and evaluation, and there are important points that uh, monitoring and evaluation has to take into account to make uh, the whole process gender responsive, to ensure that uh, genders, gender issues are mainstreamed in all our activities. And the next slide is a concluding remark. So when I compare uh, what has been presented in the toolkit to that of the approaches and the factors I have presented at the beginning, uh, I, I have observed that there are uh, significant attention to gender globally uh, and a lot of interventions have been made, but still uh, we have a lot to do to reach at the uh, targets uh, in 4.1 and 4.5. And this capacity development intervention seems necessarily to realize the target set. Uh, the, the contents covered in the toolkit activities provided Tips for facilitators there in the toolkit also help to achieve uh, the purpose stated in, in the toolkit, which we, which we have already mentioned earlier. And the toolkit also uh, followed the right-based approach, which I have uh, indicated earlier. And it is uh, important to realize goal 4.14, I mean, target 4.1 and 4.5. Uh, next slide. And the toolkit uh, can be used as an alternative to that of uh, the material we know prepared by Fawe. Uh, in addition to strengthen the effort of, uh, you know, providing trainings using this toolkit, we may also consider other additional options like creating a network of teachers, teacher educators, school leaders, uh, so that they can share their experiences, they can solve gender related problems, in a more uh, scientific way, and they can create gender friendly schools and teacher education institutions. Integrating these gender uh, responsive education concepts in the CPD of teacher, teacher educators, and school leaders could be an option so that uh, the issue can sustain in all their uh, development issues and practices. And maybe uh, for later revising and updating the toolkit with new developments and needs and considering things that are not addressed in this part is necessary. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Temes Gel Melaku uh, from Hadar University. Thank you for having taken us through an analysis of the toolkit on the basis of SDGs, UN standards and rights-based approach. And that analysis, we are happy that you did it with the lens of scientific with uh, um, in evidence and facts. Of course, it's difficult to do a thorough analysis in 10, 15 minutes, but you succeeded in doing so. And uh, probably questions that will be raised will enable you to give more explanation. Thank you very much. So now comes the time for the uh, question and answer discussion, which will be moderated by our colleague Temechen Ngida, Program Officer at UNESCO IGBA. So without further ado, I give him the floor. Thank you, Salu. Thank you, Salomon, and thank you, Dr. Temesken, for the nice presentations. Um, uh, my role is to facilitate the question and answer session in the chat room. So far, there are only two questions. And if you have uh, other questions, please raise your hands or post it on the chat room. The first question uh, is, I think it's for Solomon. Hello, can you explain what you mean in the last slides by contributions from all of us? The second question is from our colleague, uh, Dr. Biniam. He first gives some, some context. Gender relations are closely connected to underlying cultural values and beliefs of the society we live in. This in turn means that our gender responsive initiatives have to be culturally contextualized to different countries and communities. 
Does the toolkit incorporate a section to elaborate this point? Does it encourage and give room for contextualized responses? So let's give answers first to these ones and uh, maybe Salomon first and then uh, Dr. Samaska. Over to you. Well, um, thank you, um, for the questions. Um, and by contribution uh, means, uh, you know, um, this toolkit is is, uh, is is just an attempt. It's uh, one step forward to 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 uh, you know to challenge the challenges in in, in the gender issues. But uh, rather, our commitment. Um, and contribution, even at the individual uh, level, is very important. So, uh, so we need to be uh, committed from uh, our heart. So we need to have an open mind and an open heart. So uh, we should always be ready uh, to act. So whatever um, we supply with tools and policies and so on, Unless uh, there is uh, supported by uh, our commitments and efforts and individual level and, and group level, um, so uh, there will not be any uh, fruit. Uh, that's what I mean by uh, contribution. Maybe uh, for the second question, I'll come after the uh, Dr. Uh, Thomas again. Thank you. Hello. Hello. So uh, thank you for, for the interesting question. Uh, is it culturally responsive? Is, is a toolkit uh, gives room for cultural variations? I think that is a question if I have uh, understood it very well. Um, in, in, to my uh, observation, um, yeah, it provides the key issues to be addressed um but it also gives room uh for participants to raise and bring what they are experiencing what they are doing in their uh, respective uh, context and setup so through the activities i think we can give chance for participants to take what is happening in their local context so it's it's possible to contextualizing by inviting the participants to um, reflect on their uh, practices, reflect on their experiences. For example, if you talk about gender role, um, the gender role may differ from country to country, from community to community, from culture to culture. But if there are activities that require participants to reflect what happens uh, in their locality, in terms of the roles women and men are taking, that is a way to contextualize. So I think there is a adequate room to contextualize things uh, to the relevant cultural values. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, other questions from participants? So maybe, Tamishan, if you don't have questions in the chat room, we can give the, the floor to, to, to participants who can talk live. Yeah, they can raise their hands. That's the only yes. way. Yeah. Yes. Whoever would like to share the meantime, or comment, question can raise their hand, please. In the meantime, when when others are thinking about it, may I may I May I start asking questions, although I am part of the toolkit? Of course, go ahead, please. You can. Uh, uh, Solomon and uh, Dr. Tamaskan, as both of you raised, the issue of uh, GRP was initially coined by FAWE, uh, the Forum for African Women Educationalists, mm -hmm. and it has been, it has been, uh, I mean, you know, in existence there. Now our ICBAS toolkit is GRE, Gender Responsive Education. What is 
is the key difference between GRE and GRP. Anyone, Salomon or Dr. Martin? Yes, yes, uh, Thomas Chen. Uh, thank you for the uh, raising this question. Um, GRP and GRE, as 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 the name uh, also uh, names imply, um, GRP uh, in, it focuses at the micro level. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yes. Um, it's at the micro level, uh, it's more focused on pedagogical issues. Um, that's why uh, we, as we're in development of the, our toolkit, the GRE toolkit, uh, we rather use the, it's a comprehensive approach to cover many areas of the education, including the teacher training activities in the teacher training institutions. That is the main difference. So, GRE is, is more uh, comprehensive and uh, focuses uh, and covers many areas of the um, education. In addition to that, uh, it is a value added to the Huawei toolkit, the GRP toolkit, uh, by um, specifically um, crafting um, tools which are not existent in uh, our uh, uh, module, the GRP module. These tools uh, are specifically designed by IFA to support um, practitioners in various areas of education to be used in specific tasks of day-to-day -day, uh, activities. So, in short, um, the GRE toolkit is a more comprehensive one and covers you know, many areas of education. It goes from the micro level teaching and learning activities to teacher training at institutional levels. That is the main difference. Thank you very second. much. And second, um, this one also, uh, the GRE also, uh, contains and informed with uh, very recent developments in the uh, gender discourse. So, uh, it uh, also uh, contains um, research reports uh, and uh, many other important things. So, uh, the GRE toolkit is, is, is very much informed from the recent development in, in gender issues. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not the overall facilitator and the time is running. And Dr. Tamaskan, if you want to add something and plus to that, in your reflection, you said that maybe revising and updating the toolkit to include CPD, continuous professional development. The toolkit I understood is that it is for teachers of any any entry level, be it a pre-service or in-service CPD. So can you reflect on that? and? Well, my reflection on CPD is if if the toolkit can be part of CPD of uh, teachers, leaders, or teacher educators, uh, if it is one part there, um, they can keep on working on and they can improve their uh, practices as once it is part of the CPD. That, that's what I have uh, indicated earlier. When it comes to JAR and GRP, well, I think if we are uh, very much strict in the name, GRP mainly should deal with the pedagogy and the pedagogy in most cases deal with uh, what is going on between the teachers and the students, mostly in the classroom context. Uh, when, when it comes to GR, GRE, education is uh, something that goes beyond. Uh, the toolkit, I think, has uh, included some policy level issues education policy level issues, teacher education policies, uh, which makes the toolkit more than uh, an activity in the classroom or an activity confined in the school context. So because of the inclusion of these things, the name, I think the name JRE has been given uh, instead of saying JRP. So the, the scope it covers, in other words, is beyond 
what is happening in the classroom level, and that makes uh, the 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 name JRE. That is my observation, actually. So I, I think one one reason could be that. Thank you very much. In fact, this was exactly the discussion we had when we were conceptualizing the the GRE, and uh, I wanted this thing to come out. And mm -hmm. I must say that I have to hand over to Salu because it's already uh, 3 p.m. Salu, do you have time or? <coughs> yes, we we can take a, a couple of reactions if uh, participants are willing to to react. Uh, otherwise, we go to the to the wrap up. And then, yes, uh, there's a. Then the question that has just dropped, been dropped, what are the copyright implications as we develop global learning something? Can you go ahead? Can you go to that question, Tamina? Yeah. Any one of you? Dr. Tamaske? Uh, I didn't get the, the, the question. What was that? What are the copyright implications of uh, global learning? CPDs for teachers in Nigeria. Are there any conditions of copyright issue mm. of the toolkit? Do you mean the copyright issue of the, the toolkit? Or? Uh, it's, it's in the chat, Dr. Tomaskin. I don't know. Uh, it came from. Uh, maybe uh, this. Uh... Uh, I'm not clear about right, this question. Yes. Uh, mm. I think I think there is no any. Even I couldn't uh, get the chat. Hello. The author, yes. The author says yes. I think the author would like to take the floor to clarify. Mm. Uh, hello, everyone. Yes. C can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, hello, yes. my name is Roy. My name is Roy. We. We um, uh, develop CPD programs for teachers in, in Nigeria. And um, I was just thinking, if we design CPDs using the toolkit, are there any copyright implications um, once we include it in our course modules? That's all I'm asking. Okay, um, please uh, pro provide an answer. Uh, and then Prosper will be the last, uh, I mean, uh, one to have the floor. Please go ahead. Yes, as a UNESCO property, uh, it's uh, uh, it has no copyright restrictions as long as you use it for educational purposes. Uh, it's a, a free license, so member states are entitled to use it for educational purposes, but, but not necessarily for commercial purposes. I hope this okay. answers your question. Yeah, yes, it does. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Prosper, can you go ahead, please, very quickly? We cannot hear you. I still cannot hear you. Prosper, are you muted or? or? It doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> Can you use the laptop, the laptop speaker and remove the headphone? The system doesn't respond, I think. Prosper? No, we cannot, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. OK. <coughs> and we have come it to the. It would have been good if Prosper said something because he was part of uh, uh, the coordinator of the Ghana uh, HNE project. Yes, yes. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, yes. yes. now we can hear you. Please yeah, go ahead. I, I think I think my 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 head uh, uh, it was the the power was down. So uh, quickly, uh, I thank you so much for the presentation, sir. Uh, uh, I'm happy that this two kit has come up again. I we were part of it. Uh, validation in Ghana. I just want a quick response from all of you. Um, for us in Ghana, what do you advise us as UNESCO 
as the the best approach to use to make sure this toolkit is well is used properly in Ghana. Is it for in-service training or pre-service training? Which of which of them do you see as a good entry point? Uh, especially Solomon and uh, Temeshen, they have been in Ghana. They have seen our system. Uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Temeshen. Solomon. Yes. Um, thank you for the question, uh, Prosper. Uh, uh, this is a very important uh, question. Um, yes. Uh, this requires um, the policy decision uh, at high level. Um, but uh, the toolkit is, is being prepared to support both pre-service and in-service programs, including the professional development programs for the tissue educators. Okay. So there is no any restriction. But uh, including it in uh, informal training programs in the pre-service programs, because there is a credit tower issue, this will need uh, uh, policy decisions because a credit tower should be assigned uh, to be used as a course at the course level. But uh, in terms of preparation, the toolkit uh, will be used for uh, training purposes for both pre-service teachers and in-service teachers, including the teacher educators. All that right. is uh, regarding the uh, training approach. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, thank so you. We, we will explore which one is feasible. Uh, as you mentioned, the pre-service one is quite uh, policy and it could take a long time, but that is more sustainable actually. 